Good evening, everyone who found me. <laughs> Decided to make a video today again. Okay. Let's start from the fun parts. Few more superpowers discovered. Here you go. Telekinesis mind possible. Learn how to spoon bend with with this dude. The video about um, the spoon bending process starts approximately in 31 minutes and how he does it, he pretty much hypnotizes you a little bit when you're able to connect to your higher self and allow your higher self to change structure of the metal and results are pretty amazing. The main point from this exercise is <coughs> learn how to connect to your higher self and use it its power because it's the same technique with other situations when you're in extreme danger when when you need extra superpower it's exactly the same technique you just need to do a few times and just register what exactly you did step by step and the feelings you experience the result what I had with the spoon is pretty much like this. I did apply a little bit of um, force, but not much. It was pretty much uh, like this part of the spoon got really, really soft, almost liquefied. So it was really easy to bend. Okay, and another fun part. <laughs> Check it out. On Saturday, I had this many subscribers. <laughs> so, see? <laughs> subscribers are fake, as we already know. Numbers are fake. How many people on earth is fake? Uh, I want you to learn about the matrix from this channel because um, on this channel people who done internal work who done psychedelics who been starving themselves who been traveling to different dimensions and learning about entities this way you don't have to do it you just have to filter through yourself and see what's out there now, let's see how this crazy place were created. And I was up for like nine days and without food or water or anything. I, you know, I, I had no food, no water, total isolation for, for roughly nine days, eight and a half days. And then I, I had that vision where I saw this essentially a person a kind of like a person, like a mad scientist type person who created eternity. And I, I saw how he did it. I know how he created eternity, like the mechanics of it. And then he stepped into it and just, he didn't even hesitate. He didn't, he didn't even fucking think about it. He just stepped into this eternity box like it was nothing, knowing full well that once he stepped in, he'd never, ever, ever be able to get back out. You know, that he became everything. He fractulated into everything that exists. And he just can't, there's no way to get out. It's eternity. You're trapped in there forever. Can I read the first chapter? False eternity. Eternity which goes to entropy. It's fractalized itself to the infinity. It's not growing. And it's using energy to survive. <sighs> That's the infinity box were created. Why did he jump into it? Was was his real thoughts were to experience how to be God? Or it was something more benevolent just to create possibilities for you guys to survive until the help gonna come over 
one day we're probably gonna find out. I kind of think he was trying to experience what God is and everybody else who dying after him doing approximately the same they fractalize to the infinity and become the box itself now <clears throat> imagine the ocean huge endless there is a fish over there and there is an aquarium which plays inside the ocean but it's completely closed system and the fish with inside the aquarium cannot see what's outside and the fish with inside the aquarium does not know what it is and what they're doing either and they're in the process of figuring out who they are and that's the only way to survive what's coming and what's coming is pretty much this box gonna be completely dissolved and the fish gonna be let into the ocean but ocean is not exactly the ocean it's it's pure energy and if your vibrational energy will not match the energy of the ocean you will be destroyed about fishes inside the aquarium there is different types of fish there is a beautiful self-igniting fish just a second because it doesn't show when i need it to self-igniting fish that's the battery holders that's the battery for the system <laughs> that's the alive ones what else is inside the aquarium partially fractalized one the ones what needs to be on the life support as right now and they getting life support from us and there is a, a few types when the pressure inside this cube is so tremendous each lifetime is so horrible and it's pulling you apart and in order to feel comfortable it's suggesting you to give up to break down so some of those the last stage they actually completely broke down and nothing can be done to put them back together as an end result when everything is done for those who on life support right now you you either become the life ones or you're gonna be discovered that's pretty much the story a little bit about that picture Next thing we're gonna see what's happen after you die. Yeah. Tiger as a leopard. People see me as all sorts of different things in those trips because I don't put those things on myself because those are only limitations. So I just let those people uh, just see me for how they want to see me. I'll tell you like I'll tell you like one actual real experience. It's like it's uh it's when I was a psychopomp or what people call the fairy man or the guide of souls. And my experience wasn't my soul being guided, but I was the guide to the soul and. This, um, and so in the experience, this uh, this person somewhere here, down here, had left their body and died. And I saw their spirit. And their spirit had just left their body, and they were looking around all confused. So me, I met them, and I'm like, it's time to go. And they're like, where are we going? And I said, nowhere. And I meant nowhere as in no hyphen where, because there's nowhere to go. Everything is everything. And then it said, who are you? And I said, nobody, as in no body. And it's, you know, so it kept on asking me these questions. And what happens is in every case that this has happened, it's like these spirits that come out of their body. It's like they're looking for attachments. They're looking for associations. They're looking for the familiarities, the labels, the definitions, the things that they think. And 
every single time as we kept on going further, it's like I would strip another layer away. So they'd be looking for me to see where this voice was coming from. And every single time they try and look for me, they try and put a label on me so they could see me. But I would shed that label off and remain invisible to the person because I was bringing them to that ultimate state to where it's like, you are no thing. And But every single spirit that I've ever guided through that process has always lost himself in the fear. And they become overwhelmed in the fear of it because they realize that everything they knew was a lie. Every- That's exactly what happens to you after you die. It's a very, very precise pre- description. There is also an answer for you over here why you should not use shamans when you're doing ayahuasca. Um, this interview is, is with Walt Work- Walker and he went to Walt Walker 1988 and he went to South America to do ayahuasca and he met a shaman over there. 